What's up guys, this is Shana and today we're going to check out Lumi Tropicana at Tropicana. <laughs> Let's go! We are back in this very famous Persiaran Tropicana because of its connectivity this street has always been known to be that Atta street as well where you have the golf and country resort where you have all the fancy bungalows So Lumi Tropicana is located very close to the junction that connects Ara Damansara, Banda Utama, Tropicana itself and Kota Damansara So this is Pasiran Tropicana and what you can see the developer is still improving the infrastructure Why they need the pedestrian pathways like this one is so comfortable to walk in Right opposite are all the private mansions there's Tropicana Grande, then there's Tropicana Avenue. This is a commercial office building, and this will be Lumi Tropicana. So, this will be the entrance into the entire mixed development, right? And you can see the landscape treatment, the water treatments. Wow! Look at that buffer from the main road to the building. Whew. Now we are at the lower ground and if you are a visitor who just want to come to the marketplace, the Lumi marketplace, this is where you will come in and how they demarcate out the parkings, right? Visitors all park downstairs, residents with access cards will park at the elevated car park above. Uh, cement flooring, you have some brickworks. I like the openings. So it somewhat brings in some ventilation and daylighting. And this will be the locks for the commercial. So in the future, this will be clinics, some will be convenience stores and whatsoever and it will only complement the lifestyles of the residents above. And when you walk around, right, there will be a lot of music <laughs> all around. But one thing though, the ceiling height, it's like minimal, very very low. This is 2.35 meters. It's compliant, definitely, just that it feels a bit dwarfing. Anyway, moving on. Coming right up, this is the ground floor car park and instantly <laughs> it feels so nice. You have this double height ceiling which is really nice but these are only allocated for the owners of the bigger units because their unit is the most premium one. They get to enjoy the better car parks. Lah. And you can see the overall theme of treatments by right? that cement rendering. If you're a fan of architecture like me, then you will appreciate it. And one of their selling points is this circular ramp directly up. So it's easier if you are parking at a higher floor. This is straight away going up instead of the ramp up, ramp up, ramp up kind of system. This spider ramp is way faster. Plus, the width is 4.4 meters. Very, very comfortable. And I enjoy the little greeneries that they plant along the ramp to somewhat soften it, right? And this will also be the air well into the basement itself. Cool. So if you guys don't know yet, this is a mixed development that comprises of the commercial lot which is what they call the Lumi Marketplace then you have the Soho it's around 62 units of them and all sold out besides the one that they use as their show unit now and the one as a management office, the rest all sold out <laughs> okay and right on top of that will be all the residents in total of 744 units so now we are somewhat in that transition space between the car park, the Soho, the marketplace and the residents and usually these are the place where the architect will demonstrate their skill sets lah. coming up from the car park there's some shadings right and these will be the Soho units that we will eat just now you can see some landscapes here this is that raw approach that material honesty approach this structure actually aged along with the building itself as if it's alive Going right up to the highest floor of the car park structure, we are now in this facilities deck. They call it the Lumi Park and it's amazing. <laughs> the amount of facilities here are crazy. First of all, you have this uh, workout zone, you have the swing, the children's playground at the end. You have this multi-purpose facility area, then this man-made 
motor structure. After you do your yoga with your friends or pilates, right, there will be a zone for you to just chill at the side. And these vertical fins somewhat resembles their column design. And this usually gives very dramatic shadow profiles, right? And I like that they also provide external plug points for convenience. What's fascinating, right? Around this 6.4 acres development, around 60% of it are actually green space. The main build-offs are actually from that four vertical towers. And I like that they push the volume upwards so they actually leave up more empty space on the ground floor to have more buffer away from the very busy environment. Like you can see, next to us will be office buildings. Then halfway through, you will have a bridge that goes through a fish pond with toys inside. This is really like a place to be during the evenings. But because this is situated next to the highway, a very busy road, therefore there will certainly be noise pollution or whatsoever. There's something to point out as well during the handover of phase one. There were certain comments about the workmanship, right? And the developer actually took effort in addressing them. So they upgraded a lot of things within the facility deck. One of them is this flooring. It used to be cement flooring, but then they upgraded it. Also, just to illustrate how close we are to the highway. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess there's nothing much we can do for the outdoor space. The only one we can treat are the interior spaces, right? And this will be the barbecue pit right next to the reflexology pathway. So this is the wall climbing facilities. And it's right next to the tennis court, next to the futsal court as well. So the theme for the facility there is pretty much lifestyle oriented. I can just gather my friends here and do everything here together. And this is one of those very interesting spaces where it's between two wall climbing facilities that they provide. It's very interesting as they have this very interesting shadow profile casting over this brick wall. Very nice. I just like the amount of textures around the facility. So you have the wall, the shadow, the landscape, the shrubs, the water. Also, there are empty spaces in abundance throughout this entire facility deck. And I really enjoy that there's really a nice balance between active spaces and non-active spaces. So, it means if I want to come and chill, I can. I want to come and play futsal, play tennis, play bouldering with my friends, also can. And the very nice organic layout of pathways really just slows you down. And this facility is totally in contrast to whatever structural elements and orientation from the building itself. You can see the very busy columns and sheer wall layouts across the entire residence tower and Soho tower, right? On this side, it's just pure emptiness and it's nice. So I am very glad that they push up that tower instead to leave up more empty spaces for people to have lifestyle so nice and this facility deck is also connected to four separate towers all together via this bridge and let's go check them out Then right opposite that facilities deck, we are now in the gym itself. So there will be two gyms. This is that elevated protruding deck above the swimming pool. Let me show you guys. That's the swimming pool and we are elevated on top of that swimming pool. So this is pretty cool. You can see the cardio area here and I must say the equipment's packed. However, the view that you'll get will be this view. I guess it's okay. So this will be the Ara Damansara Junction. This will be the junction into Tropicana Golf and Country Club. And this will be Persiaran Tropicana. And here, right, this illustrates the buffer again from that junction to the tower itself. And I really enjoy this treatment. And in contrast to the concrete furnishings, right, this structure itself mainly consists of steel. And I like how the architect used that structural element as that design aspect of the space itself to make it look very raw, very industrial. Just nice for your grit. Then inside, <laughs> this will be your free weight zone, your bars, cable machines, and you have the right flooring for you to put your weights. 
Very nice. Then below the gym, we are now in this Malaysian Book of Records certified longest infinity pool in Malaysia. Total 190 meters. Pretty cool. There are several advertisements to that, so you have the external one as well, like a lap pool when it's four feet deep. But then on the inner side, you still have places to sit around so you can hang out still having that view. And the changing room design is also integrated into the pool itself. So when you are changing, right, so this will be the toilets. And you can see this translucent layer. Wow. Moving on, we are now at the rooftop of one of the blocks, right? There will be four towers all together. Four of them will have different facilities. And in this one, they have this music room, okay? So they are collaborating with Yamaha and they will get instructors in to conduct classes here. So for every classes booked here, the rental of the space can be used to knock off some of the maintenance fees. So that's very good. And that explains why the music instruments are all provided in the first place. You can see the electric guitars, the drum set, the acoustic guitars, all are readily available. Finally, they designed this outdoor AV room. So you can turn this around and when you open it up, it can be somewhat like a performance area. Then at the far end, this will be a library space. But one thing I'm not too sure, what do they do and how do they address the noise from the street? It's pretty evident. So like when I'm watching movies then, I don't know. Then on this same floor, this will be the kids jungle gym. Wow, I can really imagine my kids, right? After music class, we will just jump around. we are on the other tower and this will consist of all the playrooms. We are now on the pavilion court but it's open air so I'm not sure how feasible it is. On one side you have the pool table, the other side you have the table tennis room. Personally speaking from a former state player, I don't think the space is sufficient uh, but if it's just for entertainment wise then by all means. Just saying like at the other end this will be the squash room. So in this tower it will all be games oriented. So after we went through the play area, the action area, this is the wellness zone, right? Where it's really about massage, spa, rooms for yoga and whatsoever. And this is also the same treatment where you can get your own masseuse to come in and you somewhat rent that space and that rental again will be inserted into the management fees. And in this sauna, right? This got to be the best sauna room with view. Check that view out. You can see clearly that reserve forest next to the golf course. Ooh. And we are now in the final tower. This is called the lifestyle tower where you have the dining, la, the bar, the wine room, business center. You have meeting rooms on top, a cigar room here, then you have this open area. And when the marketplace downstairs is ready, you can anytime call for caterings here so you can host your party here. And if this is not enough, just in case, right? There's also an internal dining room. So just by walking around the facility deck, right? It's already taking a very, very long time. That just shows the amount of facilities. It's crazy. And when you think about living here, we just have so many things to do. And that is exactly what the design intent is. You don't have to leave the space. If you want to have music class for your kids, the music teacher will be here. You want to get a massage, get the masseuse here. You want to have gatherings with your friends, get the caterers here. But just one thing to point out though, I see a lot of plays using levelings where you have a shadow gap, then you have this entrance experience with the steps. It's cool but it's not as friendly therefore they even thought about that. There's a general line where you can call if you need assistance so I think it's still considerate of them. After visiting all the facilities finally we get to really check the floor layout and what you can see here this is the lift lobby. In terms of width is 2.8 meters, height is 2.6 and you look at the furnitures right it's that very raw, very unfinished look. Well, either you think that it's nice or it's unfinished. Anyway, you have this 
interplay of materials for your leaf panels. So per floor, there's only six units, which is totally in contrast to what we see from the outside. Like it looks so high dense, right? But actually, it's not. And they'll be sharing three leaves all together: two passenger leaf, one service leaf. And in this kind of layout. It's a single loading corridor so that the residents have sufficient privacy to their very own unit and it's open here. So this leaf lobby is exposed to the void on both sides which somewhat introduce uh, daylight and wind inside but it depends on which floor you are. The higher you are, the brighter it will be. But something very interesting right? the voids are very, very narrow. Then at the next wing among the stairways this will be the refuse chamber. Okay. So on one side, the corridors will be 1.5 meters. On this side, it will be 1.2 meters in width. And you will see sprinkler system because this is a commercial building. Okay. So going into the unit, this will be your foyer, a rather big one where you can accommodate a shoe cabinet here. And they are so proudly presented by Schneider. And before we go in, there's already several things I want to highlight. Number one is the spray painting of the walls here. Then the second thing, check out door numbering. It's awesome. Then the stone texture tiles and the joint between the wall and the door frame, which is using this shadow gap thing. Nice. So the unit I'm going to check out today will be type B2 which is 1159 square feet, three bedrooms in total. So when you come in via this entrance here, you will have the kitchen tucked at this side. Then you will have the dining and living here. And what you can see strongly, they have this two balcony design which they celebrate. And it's connected via this corridor. So this corridor connects you to one bedroom here with an ensuite. Then there's a smaller bedroom here that shares the common toilet here. Then there will be the principal bedroom at the end and its principal bathroom with its private balcony again. So coming into the unit is a 2.6 meter ceiling height. It's not the usual 3 meter ceiling height, but it's furnished with a plaster ceiling along with the lighting points and sprinkler system. And the wall to wall we feel which is the more narrow one is 3.3 meters. And that actually just frames up the view of the golf course mountain and reserve along with the mansions. For this balcony, the flooring material is rather peculiar as well. They almost apply the same texture but one is a glossy type, this is the matte type. And to me, this is the deal breaker, right? So, at this balcony, the only variable will be the noise from the traffic. This is the last block, indirectly means the furthest away from the junction. That's why you don't really feel the noise anymore. Not as bad like the first one, right? So now you can only hear some renovation of the brand new tower. The selling price for this leasehold property now is ongoing for 950 per square feet. So this unit is around a million, but it depends on which height that you want to choose. Like. But if you look at this view, right? This block has one of the best view. Now you can really see people enjoying their life playing golf. Whew. And something different as well, they are introducing a planter box here for you to plant your shrubs. Then also something to point out, you can see they are not applying any things to their design. And it's actually on purpose. So this can somewhat illustrate their workmanship because that termination line between the wall and the floor is crucial. When a skirting involved, I can just chin chai terminate the edge, but now it's all exposed. Anyway, lighting points, air cons will be provided that you need. And this is the kitchen. So if you look into the layout, you start with a washing machine area, then your fridge, then you have a kitchen cabinet here, then you have an island here. Then your fridge is all gonna be there, and there's a window on top for ventilation. Then moving along, this is a 940mm corridor, rather narrow, but this connects to one bedroom, two bedroom, and three. So this is the smallest one, where it's 2.4 meters by 2 meters in terms of area size. So if you look into the window panels here, that's the effort in trying to introduce more light into the space. However, it's still dark. Plus, you don't enjoy as much privacy because you are really close to the corridor outside because the void is just too narrow. Then for all bedrooms, they use vinyl floorings and that's a separation of materials between that against the tiles. And this will be the common bathroom. Basin by Zila, 
and WC by Zilla. Full high wall tiles partially. This part is all tiled up to the ceiling, but this is not. So again, judging based on the no skirting design, this is how they try to illustrate their workmanship and design. The only reason they want to do this is because of their confidence in their markings of wet and dry areas in the bathroom. This will be the wet zone and the rest will be all dry. Anyway, so they have a shower screen here and shower again with the window panel on top. Then going opposite, this will be the second bedroom with its on suite bathroom. So it's somewhat similar to the shared bathroom where Basin and WC is by Zilla. You also have this small compartment here. And I like it's provided for so you don't have to furnish it up again. Then shower screen and the partial towel finishes. From that bathroom, then we have this bedroom here and the quality of space changed drastically because of the window. The daylight just changed everything. So this is a 3.1 by 3.1 meters and you can see the window is from edge to edge. So that's their effort in trying to maximize as much light as possible into the space and both of them can be open. So that's great. And last of all, this will be the principal bedroom. And this width is as wide as their living room, so it's very, very nice and comfortable for the principal of the house. Here you can design your wardrobe space, right? You can have your work desk, your TV, your bed, and you can enjoy your private balcony along with your private garden, then overlooking into that same view. Nice. Then at the end, heading to the principal bathroom, a uh, similar design, Zilla, Basin and WC, you have that counter. But one thing to highlight though, I don't know whether do you like the same exact texture all across the space. Your dining and living, your balcony and your bathroom. But anyway, again, they are clear demarcation of dry and wet area. Also to highlight that very peculiar window arrangement. Very uncommon. Hmm. Oh yeah, before I forget, the team also checked that time internet service will be available already in this particular project. And I guess that's all for the unit. It's now time for Sean take 3 on 3. 3 things I really like. Number 1, the address itself. So this address has always been known as the high-end address because of its high-end residence of Golf and Country Club by Tropicana. And you can see this street that connects to several main addresses like Bandar Utama, Ara Damansara, Kota Damansara, Petaling Jaya. And along this street, you have the park, you have the school, you have the commercial area, you have the offices, you have the residence. Generally, whatever you need will be along this road and that's the main reason why it's so popular. So besides being so connected, right, it's also rich in open space. When you look around, it's very green and it consists of the golf clubs as well as the forest reserve at the far end. So you really get to enjoy all that, especially if you're on a high rise. The second thing I really enjoy would be the facilities in abundance that is so lifestyle driven. So instead of separating functions by different buildings itself, they integrate all into one, which means that you can see four blocks. You will have the Soho, you will get some marketplace at the bottom, and you get a residence above. That gives enough space and breather to the greeneries. In this 6.4 acres itself, they have around 60% of them in green. And that's for several reasons. Like, because this is situated right next to that junction, that very, very busy junction. And the team inserted this huge buffer away from that. On the other side will be the highway itself. So they're just buffering the building away from all the noise. And how they introduce the sense of space to the residents is by this three acres park on top of the elevated car park structure. So within that, you have all the active spaces, non-active spaces, and in every tower, there will be facilities on top as well, all with different themes. And last of all, the architectural language. And this is a very controversial one. It's either you love it 
or you hate it because of the approach that they use which is more natural, more raw, more unpolished the logo itself right at the entrance they're already using this material that will rust and it will change every now and then then in the car park it's very heavy concrete then in the entrance of the units you will have these same materials as well proper materials that's floating on water with pebbles inside welcoming you into the common corridors that has this unfurnished look of wall renderings then when you come into the uni it somewhat feels the other direction where you have marble textured tiles and it's applied in your dining and living balcony as well as your bathroom not only in material selections you also can see in terms of architectural treatments like skirtings as well so to me i'm worried about the stains when i mop the floor the window arrangement we have this vertical member against a horizontal one like an l shape so that's also very rare and a big one would be the toilet in terms of the demarcation of wet and dry area so they are so confident that certain areas will be dry they will just leave it as plaster and paint not tiling it up but then from a point of a consumer the three things i don't like is then the same thing with this kind of treatments is it practical so we have several projects before this where the architectural treatments of the common areas are very controversial and there will be people who are okay to sacrifice certain level of practicality just for spatial quality but some of the buyers would then expect i'm paying a million to give me better quality ones but in terms of the architectural design to me there are just too many columns on the tower building. You really feel dwarf, especially in the car park area where it's just columns after columns and in certain areas, the ceiling height is just too low. Even when you are walking around the Soho looking down into the transition space where people come up from the car park going into separate towers, right? You can see just the entire space surrounded with columns. It's, again, it's either you like it or you hate it. The second thing I don't like would be the first impression of this being a very very high density project but when you look at it right it's not that high plus you have six units per floor right but that's their intent which is to squeeze in all the residents into this high tower since you get better views on top right why not and then have that open space on top of the car park block but from the road itself this structure is just too overwhelmed plus you also have the impression because this building being located next to that very very busy intersection that combos of traffic like that is just very very busy creating that crazy bottleneck of traffic and because of that point number three will be the noise pollution so in this current block which is the furthest block away from the junction you don't feel it but in the common areas you are surrounded by offices and highways and the busy road so the noise is definitely going to be there and how i wish the water treatments around the facility that they can add in certain sound to it so it can somewhat mask the traffic noise if not this entire experience will be very very nice and i guess that's all for this episode shout out to the team for having me touring me around this amazing architecture so do i like this project it's a great project if you enjoy material applications because this definitely is not for everyone the treatments that the designer put in so much thought may just look unfurnished to someone else but in terms of function wise you have the commercial area and the soho and the residence right that works for the entire persiana tropicana so in terms of function no worries and with that if you really like this episode like it share it, and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is sean tan ciao